At just 18 years old, my granddaughter Lily came home with her boyfriend Mike to announce that she was pregnant. While I wanted to be happy for her, there were many things about the situation that worried me. Neither of them had jobs, and with a baby on the way, it was going to cost a lot of money. What were they planning to do? My husband James decided to step in and offer Mike a job at his company. Come work at my company. This way you, Lily, and the baby won't have to worry about your future. Not only did he hire her boyfriend, but he also extended the offer to her in-laws, who were unemployed at the time. James thought that by helping them get on their feet, it would ease some of the burden. However, things didn't go as planned. When Lily went into labor, she called Mike. His response was shocking. Ugh, can't make it. I'm on a vacation with my parents in Las Vegas. It'd be a waste to fly back now when we're having so much fun. You handle it. We couldn't believe what we were hearing. The thoughtless attitude he showed toward Lily and their unborn child made both my husband and me furious. Before I could say anything else, he hung up. James was furious and immediately took action. Little did Mike know this would turn his and his family's lives upside down. My name is Sarah Jones, and I'm a 67-year-old housewife. My husband, James, and I have a daughter named Emily. Emily is incredibly strong-willed and doesn't back down once she's made up her mind about something. A few months after she broke up with her boyfriend, she found out she was pregnant. She was already three months along by the time she realized. You need to contact him right away. This isn't just your responsibility. He needs to know. Emily, however, refused. She didn't want to tell him and said she'd raise the baby on her own. What are you talking about? Stop being stubborn and contact him. As we argued back and forth, James stepped in. Emily, do you have a reason for not telling him? Emily quietly nodded. If that's the case, we'll support you all the way. Although I wasn't fully convinced, I told Emily. Promise me you'll tell him when you're ready. Emily agreed, and I vowed to support her as a single mother. On her due date, Emily calmly left for the hospital on her own. Go deliver a healthy baby. She smiled and gave me a thumbs up before heading off. A few hours later, we received a call from the hospital that shattered our world. Emily had passed away during childbirth. James and I were in complete shock. How could this have happened? She was fine just a few hours ago. We rushed to the hospital, where the nurse explained everything, but it didn't sink in. When we finally entered the room, Emily looked like she was simply sleeping. We broke down in tears. Emily had likely put the baby's life above her own. I promised her that I would raise her child in her place. After the funeral, we formally adopted the baby and named her Lily, just as Emily had wanted. I'll raise you well in your mother's place, Lily. James and I did our best to raise Lily, but times had changed. Parenting today was so different from when we had raised Emily. There are easier parts, but other things are so much more harder now. Let's raise her to be happy for Emily's sake. With determination, we managed to raise Lily through high school. Sometimes other kids teased her for having older parents, but Lily, strong like her mother, never let it bother her. So what? They were the best parents ever. She never told anyone that we weren't her biological parents. Then one day, Lily brought us a letter she had written for a school assignment. I wrote this in class. You can read it later. That night, James and I read the letter. She wrote about how she felt when we told her the truth, and how she had come to accept it. She said that both we and Emily were her real parents and that she loved us all equally. Both James and I couldn't stop crying. The next morning, Lily came to the breakfast table with puffy eyes, just like us. We all laughed about it together. From that day forward, our bond only grew stronger and Lily never faced any more hardships throughout the rest of her school years. Eventually, Lily graduated from high school. Congratulations on graduating, Lily. Thank you. I'm sure mom is celebrating in heaven too. Of course she is. She's probably bragging to everyone up there. Lily sometimes asked what her biological mother was like. I always told her that Emily was as lively as she was and full of spirit. Mom had me when she was 20, right? I wonder if I'll meet a great guy soon too. If you do, make sure to introduce him to us, okay? We want to meet anyone you love and get to know them. Of course! Don't worry, I'll keep you posted! Given what happened with Emily, James and I were determined to ensure that Lily didn't follow the same path. We needed to know who she was seeing and make sure she was safe. 
we're not overreacting, right? You two are worrying too much. I'll tell you as soon as I get a boyfriend. We believed everything was fine. But just a few months later, we were in for a shock. About six months after Lily started vocational school, she came home one day and said, Hey, is it okay if I bring my boyfriend over tonight? Wait, you have a boyfriend? Sure, bring him over. We were thrilled, but Lily seemed a bit off. She quietly left the house and James and I discussed the situation. She didn't look too happy. I wonder if something's wrong with her boyfriend. We'll find out tonight. Let's not speculate too much until she talks to us. That evening, I was preparing dinner, anxiously waiting for Lily and her boyfriend to come home. I'm back! My heart raced as I quickly walked to the door. Welcome home! Oh, hello! A young man stood beside Lily, casually greeting me with a simple, Hey! James came out of his study and introduced himself. Hello, I'm Lily's father. Nice to meet you. Sup, I'm Mike. His relaxed attitude caught us off guard, but James handled it maturely. We all sat down for dinner and Mike shared his story. I'm currently a part-time worker, but I'm working on becoming a musician. Mike explained that he was a street performer with no steady income. Lily was supporting his dream of becoming a professional musician. Listening to him, I felt uneasy. How could I support their relationship when his future was so uncertain? James had the same worried expression on his face as we both quietly observed the couple. Then Lily dropped a bombshell. There's something else I need to tell you. I'm pregnant. James and I froze, staring at them in disbelief. Wait, is that true? Yeah, I'm already a few months along. Yup, it's happening. We exchanged worried glances. So what's the plan moving forward? Mike, how are you going to support the baby? James bombarded them with questions, his voice filled with concern. I was equally anxious, leaning in and nodding at each of his points. Well, I want Mike to keep pursuing his music career, but I also think he should get a steady job. Dad, could you hire him at your company? Lily clasped her hands together, pleading. Mike, however, seemed indifferent, looking down at his nails as if the conversation didn't concern him. I know your company allows for side jobs, and I don't want Mike to give up on his dream, but we need stability too. Please, Dad. Mike, do you even want to work? Can you handle a job in sales or office work? James wanted to help, but Mike's attitude was making it hard to see his commitment. Yeah, sure. I can do a job. His response was casual and lacked enthusiasm, making us even more doubtful. James wasn't convinced, so he pressed on. I play music on the street every day, talking to strangers and getting tips. That's harder than sales, right? I also took computer classes in high school, so I got this. James eventually agreed, though reluctantly. All right, I'll give you a chance, but you have to work hard for Lily and the baby. No problem. Mike smiled, but his casual attitude still worried me. Oh, one more thing. Could you hire my parents too? My mom can do part-time. Mike asked if we could hire his parents, explaining that his dad had quit his job recently and his mom, a former housewife, wanted to start working. James, always wanting to help, agreed. All right, but remember you need to take care of Lily and make her happy. Thanks, man. Mike gave James a firm handshake and left, quickly heading back home to share the news with his parents. Thank you so much, Dad. I'm so glad you're giving him a chance. While James reassured Lily, I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling in my chest. Later that night, as we discussed the situation privately, James revealed his real motive for hiring Mike and his family. By keeping Mike at the company, we can avoid another situation like we had with Emily. I want to make sure we can stay connected for Lily's sake. You're right. We need to ensure they're taken care of. We both agreed it was for the best, hoping everything would work out for Lily and her future baby. The next week, Mike and his parents started working at the company, and Lily continued attending her vocational school until her due date. As Mike settled into his job, we started discussing where the young couple would live. Let's move into my parents' house. No way! Let's buy a place of our own. We can't afford that yet. And then let's wait until we're saved up. They couldn't come to an agreement, so I made a suggestion. How about you two live separately until the baby is born? That way, Mike can focus on work and saving up. Once the baby arrives, you'll have enough for an apartment. That sounds like a great idea. What do you think, Mike? Sure, that works for me. 
With that plan in place, they both agreed to start saving and spending their money wisely until the baby was born. James handed Mike a company credit card for work expenses, telling him to bring his ID the next day to sign the paperwork. Don't forget to tell your parents too. Got it. Mike seemed excited about getting his first credit card. Man, I've never had a credit card before. This is going to be awesome. I'll add you as a family member to my card too. That way you can help with baby stuff, like buying supplies online. That'd be amazing. Thanks. I couldn't help but smile at their casual conversation, feeling like they were starting to settle into their roles as a couple. Little did I know, this would only be the beginning of Mike's reckless behavior. After dinner, Mike mentioned he had other things to take care of and left soon after. Why can't you just come over more often, even when there's nothing specific going on? I'm busy, Lily. I've got a lot on my plate with work and music. It's a waste of time to come if I don't have a reason. He chuckled and laughed, but his words left me uneasy. Normally, you'd expect your boyfriend to come over just to see you, right? Lily's voice was filled with sadness. Yes, but he started his job and he's working on his music. Maybe he's just overwhelmed. I tried to comfort her, but in reality, I was just as worried as she was. Over the next few months, Mike only visited Lily twice a month at most. Lily would often complain about how she saw him more often when they were just dating. James and I continued to support her emotionally, but the strain on her was becoming more obvious. Then one day, Lily came to us with a hopeful expression on her face. I've been keeping up with Mike on social media, and it seems like his music is starting to take off. He's getting more attention as a musician while still working, so maybe this will all pay off. I need to support him more, especially now. I was happy to see her spirits lift, even though Mike's attitude still concerned me. By the time Lily reached her eighth month of pregnancy, her belly had grown large, and she was eagerly preparing for the arrival of their baby. We spent our mornings together discussing baby names over breakfast. One morning we were eating breakfast, when suddenly there was a sound. I think my water just broke! The whole family froze. Lily's face turned pale with fear. Quick, we need to call the hospital. Lily, don't move too much. James, grab her hospital bag. On it. We rushed to get everything together and drove Lily to the hospital. In the car, I sat beside Lily, holding her hand and rubbing her back to calm her nerves. It's going to be okay. We're almost there. The doctor said last time that the baby was in a breech position. If that hasn't changed, I might need a C-section. I texted Mike about my water breaking, but I haven't heard it back yet. Don't worry, I'll explain everything to Mike if needed. He'll be here soon. We arrived at the hospital and after a checkup, the doctor confirmed that the baby was still breached and a C-section was necessary. I called James, who was waiting in the car, and then I tried to call Mike. But no matter how many times I dialed, Mike didn't pick up. What is he doing? Shouldn't he be on his way by now? Maybe he's driving and can't answer. Let's give him a bit more time. After leaving a voicemail, I waited anxiously. 30 minutes passed, then 40, but Mike still hadn't arrived. Lily's baby is about to be born. Let's try calling again. Finally, Mike answered. Where are you? Lily's water broke, and she's about to have a C-section. Mike's voice was calm, almost too casual for the situation. Oh, I'm in Vegas with my parents. We're at a casino. I know Lily's about to give birth, but can you handle it for me? I'm really busy right now. What? You need to get on a plane and come back immediately. Your child is about to be born. My voice trembled with frustration as I tried to get through to him. Look, I didn't even want a kid in the first place. I'm finally getting somewhere with my music. I had a great street performance last night. Got more tips than ever. Right now I'm doing something nice for my parents, so there's no way I can leave. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This is your child, Mike. You need to be here. He sighed, clearly irritated. I don't need this right now. Just take care of it, okay? And with that, he hung up. I immediately tried to call him back, but he had blocked my number. What did he say? James had been listening to the entire conversation and now wore a dark expression. Unbelievable. Well, I've got some business to take care of. You stay with Lily. I'll be back soon. Without another word, he got up and left the hospital, heading home. A few minutes later, the nurse came out to inform me that Lily has safely delivered the baby. The baby was born early, so they'll need to stay in the neonatal unit for a while. The baby was small but perfect. I peered through the incubator at the tiny, fragile body, overwhelmed with emotion. So small. 
was so beautiful. Seeing the baby's tiny hands and feet moving brought back memories of when Lily was born. For a brief moment, I forgot about Mike and his cruel behavior, consumed only by the joy of new life. Soon after, I was able to reunite with Lily. How was the baby? Cute, right? Lily was exhausted, but still managed to smile. Yes, very cute. She looks just like you, Lily. You did such an amazing job. I'm so proud of you. But then Lily's face grew concerned. Where's Mike? Did he come? <sighs> About that. I hesitated. After everything Lily had just been through, I didn't want to add to her pain. Is he off with his parents again? Couldn't he come? Sensing that I couldn't hide the truth, I explained. He said he's on vacation with his parents in Vegas and can't leave right now. I braced myself for Lily's reaction. I see. She chuckled, but it was a bitter laugh, and tears began to well up in her eyes. I kind of figured. I had a feeling he wouldn't be here for me or the baby. She paused, her tears now streaming down her face. I told him to stay nearby just in case, but deep down, I guess I knew. I couldn't take it anymore. I rushed to her side and hugged her tightly as she broke down into sobs. <laughs> he promised he'd be here. She cried. It's okay, Lily. Let it out. You're not alone. I held her, my heart breaking for her, filled with anger at Mike's selfishness. Focus on resting and getting better. I'll take care of everything else. After making sure Lily was settled, I left the room. As I walked out of the hospital, James had returned. How's Lily and the baby? They're both okay. The baby's in the neonatal unit, but everything went well. Oh, good to hear. But Mike, I just can't believe what he said. I know, but don't worry, I've handled it. Handled it? What do you mean? I'll explain everything when we get home. James gave me a reassuring smile, but I could tell he has something up his sleeve. Later that evening, after checking in on Lily again, we returned home. Now tell me, what exactly did you do? James smirked, his eyes gleaming. Let's just say Mike and his family have a big surprise coming their way tomorrow. I stared at him, curious, but also a little concerned. What did you do, James? You'll see soon enough. For now, just know that he won't get away with abandoning Lily and the baby. James had always been protective, but this time he seemed especially determined. I trusted him, but I couldn't help but wonder what exactly he was planning. The next morning, Lily sent us a picture of the baby. She's getting stronger every day. I can't wait to bring her home. She's so precious, Lily. You must be so proud. As we admired the photo, Lily called us again. Mike just called, and he sounded really confused. Confused? Why? He said his credit card stopped working, and he's been getting strange emails on his work phone. James and I exchanged knowing glances. Oh? Lily continued laughing. <laughs> he was freaking out. He kept asking what was going on, but honestly, I didn't know what to tell him. That's when James stepped in. It's simple, Lily. Mike's been cut off. He's no longer working for the company, and his corporate credit card is deactivated. Wait, what? Mike crossed too many lines, and I had to make a decision. He's fired. We also deactivated all the cards he was using. Lily's voice on the phone was filled with surprise, but then she laughed. <laughs> oh my god, that explains why he was so panicked. We all laughed, imagining Mike's shocked reaction. He deserves every bit of it. I don't tolerate people who abandon their responsibilities, especially not when it comes to my daughter and granddaughter. <sighs> Thank you, Dad. I really needed that. The three of us felt a weight lift as we realized that Mike was finally facing the consequences of his actions. So, what happens next? Does this mean I'll never have to see Mike again? That's up to you, Lily. If you want to move forward, we can make sure you're protected, both legally and financially. We'll support you no matter what decision you make. I think... I want to file for divorce. I don't want him in my life anymore. I need to focus on my baby. I could hear the strength in Lily's voice. She had been through so much, but this was her first step toward taking control of her life. And that's a brave decision, Lily. We'll help you every step of the way. I'll have the lawyer draft the paperwork. You don't have to worry about a thing. Thank you, both of you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Over the next few days, things moved quickly. Mike continued to call Lily, but she stopped answering. James and I were with Lily when Mike finally reached out to us. Why is my credit card deactivated? What's going on with the company? It's simple, Mike. You're fired. 
You abandoned your responsibilities as both an employee and a father. We have no place for someone like you at the company. Uh, this is crazy. You can't just fire me like that. I can and I did. Mike's voice grew desperate, but James remained calm. Look, I need this job. I've got bills to pay and I'm trying to make it as a musician. You can't just cut me off. You should have thought about that before you abandoned Lily during the most important moment of her life. Mike tried to argue, but James wasn't having it. This conversation is over. You'll receive your final paycheck, minus the personal charges you racked up on the company card. And just to be clear, Lily is filing for divorce. Mike fell silent, completely stunned. Divorce? She's really leaving me? Yes, and we're fully supporting her. Mike stammered, but there was nothing more to say. James hung up the phone without another word. Lily looked at us, relief washing over her face. I can't believe it's really happening. I'm free. Yes, you are. And now you can focus on what really matters, raising your baby and building a new life for yourself. Over the following weeks, Lily finalized the divorce and the company fully cut ties with Mike and his family. James even made sure to include a clause that ensured Mike would never be able to take advantage of Lily financially. One day while visiting the baby in the neonatal unit, Lily shared her thoughts with us. I want to give her a fresh start. I don't want Mike's last name attached to her. I want her to carry my name. I think that's a wonderful idea, Lily. We'll help you with that too. Anything you need. Lily smiled, her confidence growing every day. Thank you. I feel like I can finally breathe again. Months passed, and soon the baby was healthy enough to come home. We prepared everything for her arrival, decorating a cozy nursery and stocking up on everything Lily would need. It's perfect, isn't it? It's more than perfect. I can't believe how much love and support I've had through all of this. The day the baby came home was filled with joy and relief. Welcome home, little one. We all gathered around, taking turns holding the baby, marveling at how far we had come as a family. As I watched Lily rock her baby to sleep, I knew she was going to be an amazing mother, just like she always dreamed. You're doing great, Lily. Thanks, Mom. I'm going to make sure she knows how loved she is, every single day. And with that, a new chapter in Lily's life began. One filled with hope, strength, and the love of her family.